Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thanks so much for watching. Today's look is this orange toned smoky eye just inspired by my new cool toned hair and contacts. I felt like when I was blonde, everything was like very warm. So I like to kind of balance out with using cool tones on the eyes and stuff like that. Um, but now I'm feeling like super inspired to dive back into my warm toned eyeshadows and I'm just loving it. So I wanted to share it with you all. This is going to be a full face tutorial using some products that I'm super excited about. So if you want to see how I get this eye look, contour, lip, everything, then just keep on watching. So I'm going to start off with my foundation today and just hope that I don't experience any fallout. So if you've seen my recent videos, you'll know that I love the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Foundation. I've kind of not been using it because it's a little bit too light and because it requires that I use a sponge and that just like inconveniences me in the morning. However, I do love this foundation. So what I'm gonna try for you on camera is to mix it with a little bit of the Bare Minerals Serum Bronzer, and I'm gonna blend that out with the Real Techniques Miracle Complexion Sponge. I tried this with a Beauty Blender, but I actually like it better with this sponge. I feel like I usually prefer the Beauty Blender, but like the flat side of this sponge works really well with this foundation. The other reason I wanna use something today that works really well with the sponge is because I had a pretty aggressive facial yesterday, which I'm not complaining about, but I do have a little um, scab here because I got a lip wax and it irritated me. So I'm just dispensing the product onto the back of my hand. I'm going to use not even a drop of this bronzer because I'm so light. I can look orange really easily. So I'm gonna put just a tiny little drop on another part of my hand. And then with my finger, I just transferred a little bit of the bronzer with my finger into the foundation. And let's try this out. So yeah, I just realized I didn't really explain further about the aggressive facial and facial irritation. Basically, when my skin is irritated, I don't like to buff over it with a brush. So I'm using a foundation that works well with a sponge because I can just dab over the skin and that's very non-irritating. So that's why I chose this foundation today, other than the fact that I love it. I don't know if you can tell, but um, that area where I got irritated from the wax is not holding on to the makeup. Okay, I got a little bit ahead of myself. Um, I should have done this first, but I'm gonna apply the Clinique Pep Start Eye Cream underneath my eyes. You only need like a tiny bit, and I apply this with the ring finger. I really like this eye cream because it has a shea butter base, so it's like quite moisturizing, and I do find that the peptides in it help to kind of de-puff. I mean, I don't really need firming at my age underneath the eyes, but I do really like it and I've seen good results with it on clients. But um, it works really well underneath makeup because it's not like terribly, terribly emollient. The only thing is I don't like the packaging because when you snap it back closed, some eye cream still comes out. So I just take that extra and I put it on my lips. This step I would also do before foundation, but I just like get confused when I'm filming, I'm sorry, but I'm gonna take the Bobbi Brown Corrector in the shade Light Peach. Um, color correcting is not as popular as it was last year, but I am a fan of correcting underneath the eye. I just feel like if done properly, you end up using less concealer and it's more effective. Now I'm gonna use my Radiant Creamy Concealer from NARS in the shade Chantilly. This is the lightest shade they have. And I'm just dotting this on. So what's up everyone? I haven't filmed a tutorial in a while. How are you? And then anywhere I need to spot conceal on the face, I'm going to use a slightly darker shade. This is Creme Brulee. I just have a couple of breakouts around my chin. I'm gonna try and cover up this little irritated spot, even though I probably just shouldn't be putting makeup on it to begin with. Now, if I ever have texture on the skin or like a zit that I'm trying to um, cover up, I let it sit for a few seconds while I set my under eye. So I'm trying out this powder by NYX called the Blotting Powder. This is not new, but it's new to me. Oh, and that actually has a really nice mirror. I'm gonna use the puff that comes with it, and it actually has a pretty nice texture. By the way, this is in the shade Light Medium 02. It's like very light. I would not call this light medium. And now I'm gonna go ahead and blend out that spot concealer. I'm going to like underbake with this and see how it works for that. This is light enough that it's slightly brightening on my skin tone. Besides, I don't like to use a powder that's too light for this because 
I just don't like that look. Like I don't like to be able to tell that I baked. This is not a foundation tutorial, so I'm not really going in depth as to why I'm doing all of these steps, but if you would like an updated like full glam foundation routine with contour and baking and all of that, then um, just request it in the comments below and I can add it to the queue. Now I'm gonna take the Balm's Bahama Mama Bronzer. I'm gonna use this to warm up my face and I'm using the Sephora Pro Featherweight Blending. So for those of you that know me slash have been watching me, if there are any of you out there, you will know that I was blonde and that was fun while it lasted, but I'm happy to have cool tones around my face. At first it was definitely weird because I was like, why does my face feel completely devoid of color? But then I was like, oh, now I can wear more colorful makeup because I kind of have like a blank slate, if you will. Haha, <laughs> slate. And I also started trying out these like blue color contacts which match the hair super well and kind of allow me to wear more warm tones in my makeup. Whereas when I had like brown hair and blonde hair, I just felt like warm tones were not exciting. But now that I'm overall cool, I feel like I can use the warm tones to kind of complement. You know what I'm saying? So that's the direction I'm gonna go in. I don't know if that makes sense to all of you, but that's how I feel that those are just my feelings. I'm gonna use the same bronzer Bahama Mama to contour with the NARS Eda brush. Next I'm gonna fill in my brows off camera using the Tarte Amazonian Clay Brow Mousse in the shade gray. Okay and then I added a little bit of a darker gray powder to it to just add some definition. Now let me zoom you in for the eyes. So I'm gonna start off with my Urban Decay Primer Potion in Eden and then I'm gonna go in with my Inglot 6SS blending brush and my Milani Everyday Eyes um, eyeshadow collection in the shade 05 Earthy Elements and I'm going to go in with this lovely um, red orange shade. And I'm going to blend that out in the crease. And I'm gonna keep it kind of low in the crease. And then on a Smith 235, it's kind of like a pinched blending brush. I'm going to just apply this a little bit more concentrated in the crease. And that edge, I'm really making sure to feather more up than down because my eyes are slightly downturned. So sometimes, when I put a lot of eyeshadow on, I can emphasize that and I don't really want to. I don't want to give my eyes a lift. Now I'm going to use my Juvia's Place Masquerade Palette and I'm going to go in with the shade Calabar, this um, sparkly, deep, orangey, terracotta-y shade. You know, I'm going to take that on the same brush at first just because I think it's good to blend your lid shade into the crease when you're doing like an all over the lid color because it helps it blend instead of looking like a choppy difference between the lid and the crease. Oh, this is coming out way more orange than terracotta, um, which I'm okay with. I'm, I'm actually, it's nice. Now I'm going to fluff that same color all over the lid with that brush. I'm using the flat side this time and I'm making sure to get a pretty even coverage of that all over the lid. Now taking this kind of like fluffy-ish shader brush, I'm going to go into Bori from that palette. It's like a dark reddish brown right next door and I'm going to start putting that on the outer and inner corner. This shade is not super duper pigmented which is fine because that actually makes it easier to build up and blend out and I want this effect to be subtle anyway. I want it to be a little more brown rather than red, so I'm gonna take this shade Zulu and just blend that in as well. I'm just gonna get rid of some of that overblend, just because I have the habit of blending too far out, and again, that can kind of drag my eye down. Now I'm gonna take my NARS Push Liner Brush and just the dark brown shadow in the palette and it's just like a regular dark brown. It's on the warm side though. And I'm going to just wiggle that across the lower lash line. Now I'm gonna take this other fabulous Smith brush. This is the 220. Um, it's really good for blending out the lower lash line or doing like a top smoky liner. And I'm gonna use the orangey shade from the palette on that again. It's actually called Cairo. I called it Calabar before, my bad. And I'm going to use that to 
smoke out that bottom lash line. And then I'm just adding more of that dark brown to put the definition back. I'm feeling like I'm gonna go in the direction of no eyeliner for this. So I'm going to use the same push liner brush and just add a little bit of that dark brown shadow across the upper lash line. I kind of don't like the look of false lashes without like a little something across the upper lash line. Just my opinion. Now picking up the Smith 253 and the shade Giza from the palette. I'm going to highlight my inner corner. And now the star of the eye look is the Touch and Soul Metalist Liquid Foil and Glitter Shadow Duo. And I have this in the shade, I don't know what color this is, so I will have it listed down below, but basically it has a liquid side and a glitter side. The glitter is kind of flaky, almost like the Stila Magnificent Metals, but those kind of like adhere on their own to the skin. This adheres best on top of the liquid on the other side, I find. So a lot comes out on the brush, so I'm just going to wipe some of it off and then just dab it on the center of my eyes. And then, oh, you need to be careful with this because I definitely lose some glitter every time I take it out. It just kind of comes out on like this little silicone applicator thingy and I'm just going to press that on top. Wow. Why did I? Okay, I kind of spilled it everywhere, but all right. I'm going to press that on top of the base. Look at that. I have to blend it out a little bit, but that is so pretty. Alright, now I'm just going to apply lashes and mascara, and I'll be right back to show you the finished eye look. And this is the finished eye look. Now let's move on to the rest of the face. Now I'm going to do my blush. I don't know whether to go monochromatic or to create balance. I'm going to try going monochromatic. Um, I'm going to use this RNG blush by Cargo. It's called Laguna. And I'm going to use the Sephora Pro Featherweight Blending Brush, as always. Oh, that looks so pretty. I'm happy I made this decision. A little bit on the nose and on the temples. It doesn't matter about the temples though, I have bangs. Now when I dust off the excess powder from baking, I like to do that. Well, you should definitely have powder on your brush when you do that. Otherwise, it will kind of stick and you can create patchiness. Whereas if you have powder on the brush, it will glide over and dust the excess powder off more evenly. So for that, you could use the same powder that you use to bake, but I choose to use more of like an illuminating finishing powder. So I'm going to use the Bobbi Brown Nude Finish Illuminating Powder and mine is in the shade Bare. This has a couple different sections and some of the sections have like a sheen to them. Some of them come off kind of sparkly if you don't swirl your brush effectively, but for this method, it works really great. So I'm going to use that on this random powder brush that a pretty girl at the mall sold me once. I'm going to just dust off all that excess powder. Now I'm going to take my Real Techniques setting brush and Becca Moonstone and I am going to highlight with that. And now for lips, I don't know which way to go. I don't love nude lips on me with this hair. First I'm going to take the NYX Lip Liner in Natural. Now I'm going to take the Wet n Wild Liquid Cat Suit in the shade Nudie Patootie. <laughs> that is so cute. Now this is a very like gray brown nude. I haven't seen any nude like this before. And honestly, when I was blonde, it was not flattering. Slash, I don't think it's the most flattering shade, but because I have like a full beat, you can kind of make any lip color work. And because I lined it with that lip liner it's giving it a little bit more of a mauve hue oh my god it looks really good with this eye look actually i like it so this is the finished look i hope you guys like it please be sure to subscribe let me know what you want to see next in the comments down below and i will see you in my next video bye